The 1950s were a time of change, and music showed these cultural changes, yet still held on to the societal norms of the past. Much like everywhere else in the media, traditional values were upkept in music, such as traditional pop and country, which clung onto the past. Old standards also remained popular, as many covers topped charts. However, as racial tensions strained and the civil rights movement began to gain traction, music reflected these changes and tensions. Rhythm and blues and rock and roll started to popularize black music as many African-American musicians began to rise to prominence and enjoy success. Although the struggle continued as many were forgotten or denied access to audiences due to segregation. Many believed that during the 50s, a lot of white artists stole and capitalized off of black music of the time, such as Pat Boone, who covered Little Richard's Tutti Frutti and it topped charts, although many preferred the original. Yet others believe that the popularization of black music helped to bridge the gap between black people and white people, especially amongst the younger generation which helped to further the civil rights movement. Either way, these upcoming genres of the time helped to pave the way for future music, and this decade of innovation massively influenced the music we listen to today. Traditional pop music of the 1950s refers to popular music before rock and roll became mainstream, as well as music that came after rock yet remained largely uninfluenced by it. Songs in this genre can typically be classified as simple and melodic, with catchy lyrics. Most pop musicians also translated well onto television, so many had their own variety shows or music specials. They did sing original material, yet most pop hits were covers of old standards, which were songs that had been released many years prior, yet were still popular. Many traditional pop artists were interpreters of old standards, releasing covers of well-known songs in their own style. An example of a traditional pop artist from the 1950s is Clara Ann Fowler, also known by her stage name, Patti Page. She was an American pop and country singer, as well as an occasional actress. Page was the best-selling female artist and top-charting female vocalist of the 1950s, selling over 100 million records over a 60-year career. She signed with Mercury Records in 1947, and in 1950 would have her first million-selling song, With My Eyes Wide Open, I'm Dreaming. She would go on to have an additional 14 million-selling singles between 1950 and 1965. Her second number one hit and biggest-selling single would be her cover of Tennessee Waltz, originally by Pee Wee King and his Golden West Cowboys. It spent 13 weeks at number one of the best-selling records of the era, as it sold 7 million copies in the early 50s. During the late 1940s and the 50s, the time of Paige's greatest popularity, most of her pop contemporaries were incorporating jazz melodies into their music. Paige also incorporated a little jazz into her music, however she favoured country music arrangements in most of her recordings. Most of her music was produced by Mitch Miller, who found that simply structured melodies and storylines like those found in country music could be easily adapted to pop. Many of Page's most successful songs featured country music arrangements, meaning they also appeared on the Billboard country chart. She had set a new trend, as many other artists were influenced to add country music arrangements to their own songs. Another example of a traditional pop artist from the 1950s is Anthony Dominique Benedetto, also known professionally as Tony Bennett. He was an Italian-American singer of traditional pop, big band, show tunes, and jazz, as well as a painter and the founder of the Frank Sinatra School of Arts. He has sold 50 million records worldwide. When Bennett signed with Columbia Records, he was warned by the owner of the label, Mitch Miller, to not imitate Frank Sinatra. He had his first number one popular song with Because of You in 1951, a ballad produced by Miller with lush orchestral arrangements from Percy Faith. It started gaining popularity on jukeboxes, then reached number one on the pop charts and stayed there for 10 weeks, selling over 1 million copies. It was followed by several other top hits, including Rags to Riches in 1953, which, unlike his earlier hits, was an up-tempo, big band number with a bold brassy sound and double tango in the instrumental break. 
Bennett later refined his musical approach to encompass jazz singing and reached his artistic peak in the late 1950s with albums such as The Beat of My Heart and Basie Swing's Bennett Sings. Despite the beginning and popularization of rock and roll in the mid-1950s, Bennett continued to enjoy success, placing eight songs on the Billboard's Top 49 in the late 50s.